12, Acts chapter 12, Acts chapter 12. I'm not going to read this all because we've been reading this every week. We're in a series called Doors. Somebody say Doors. doors. Okay, and I, I want to just finish this series today. Can I do that? Can I just wrap this up in a, in a little bow? Um, I, I want to finish this series today, but I want to read some of this, and then I'll let you sit down, and then we'll talk about some doors, okay? Can we do that? Y'all okay? Y'all all right? Everybody good? Okay. All right. Good. I'm going to start reading at verse number six. On the very night when Herod was about to bring him forward, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound up with two chains. Somebody say, two chains. Two chains. But I got me a few on. Okay. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I just had to see if y'all were still, this was still God chases. Sleeping between, somebody was like, money long. Me and broke people, we don't get along. All right. <laughs> I'm still me. Amen. <laughs> On the very night when Herod was about to bring him forward, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. There we go. And guards in the front of the door were watching over the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared and shined a light into the cell. Somebody say, shine a light, Lord. Shine. And he struck Peter on the side <laughs> and woke him up. He gave him a pop-pop, right? <laughs> saying, saying what? Oh, come on. Y'all ain't say that right. Saying what? Right. And his chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, gird yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And then he said to him, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. You're going to have to follow somebody, right? Okay. And he went out and continued to follow. And he went out and continued to follow. And he went out. Okay. Sorry. Uh, and continued to follow and he did not know what was being done by the angel if what was being done by the angel was real but he thought he was seeing a vision when they had passed the first door and then the second door they came to an iron gate oh lord and that leads to the city which opened for them by itself somebody said open by itself and they went out and went along on the street. Immediately, the angel departed from him. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We thank you. Help me help them. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. High five three people and say it's going to be good. It's going to be short, but it's going to be good. It's going to be short, but it's going to be good. So today I want to talk about open doors. Somebody say open doors. Today, I want to talk about open doors. So we've talked about doors, right? And I've tried to go through this pretty expeditiously. We've been doing this for, for only three weeks. This is our third weekend. But I feel like we've covered a lot of ground, right? We've covered some ground. We've talked about doors and we've talked about gates, right? What's the difference between a gate and a door? It, it, the, the amount of stuff you want to bring in or the amount of stuff you want to take out, right? Somebody say more. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The difference between a gate and a door is more. Amen. So the only thing that we see here, the only thing that, that we see here when we see a gate is just a bigger door. Amen. Amen. And so P Peter is being escorted through these doors. Peter is being escorted through these doors. And I, I just felt like this would help you. I felt like this would help you. Why, Pastor Dante? Because um, there's going to be doors in your life. And you got to learn how to properly identify your doors. Okay. Now, many of us, we see doors and we want to go through every door. But we talked about this last week. Every door ain't for you. Oh, let me help you. Every door ain't for you. Say it to yourself. Every door ain't for me. Yeah, every door ain't for me. So there's some doors that God, that, that God will use to redirect you. You can see the door, right? But God will close the door. Remember we talked about Balaam? Remember Balaam? Did y'all remember this from last week? That's his name, Balaam. That's his name, Balaam. And so we talked about Balaam and how he, was, he just had to go through the door. He just had to go through the obstacle. He was on his way. And he, he had a wise donkey. Y'all remember this? He had a wise donkey that said, man, you about to get your head chopped off. And, and, and a lot of times what, what we do is we get mad at our donkeys. Right? We talked about that. Y'all with me so far. We're just doing a recap. Y'all just come with me. 
So, so, so we get upset and angry about our donkeys. But, but God says that I'm using these people to point you in the right direction. A closed door from God is not a closed door. It's a, it's a redirect. Does that make sense? A closed door from God is not a closed door. It's a redirect. He's using that, that redirection to define your purpose. L listen, er every door not for you. There's some doors, some of you guys know, some of you guys know now, if a door is an opportunity, some of you guys know now, you've, you've taken opportunities that it wasn't, it wasn't right for you. Mm, he gonna talk about relationships. Sure, sure am. Sure am, because you thought he was fine. He was fine, he just wasn't for you. He was good, he just wasn't good for you. You think he bad. He not bad. He just wasn't good for you. Amen. <laughs> he wasn't the right person for you. He going to make somebody else very happy. <laughs> and if that upsets you, then get over it. Amen. Because God has something better for you. Understand this. Because a closed door, understand this. A closed door for me automatically means that God has something better Oh, y'all not with me today. A, a closed door for me automatically means that God has something better for me. So every opportunity, every opportunity is not for me. Does that make sense? Every door is an opportunity, but every opportunity is not for me. I have to decide if this opportunity is for my destiny. Does that make sense? Are y'all with me today? Because some of y'all have fallen into trap doors. We talk about doors today. Some of y'all have fallen in the trap doors where, where you thought it was for you. The devil said, I mean, I mean, uh, <laughs> he enticed you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And you just came, you was just moving. And all of a sudden, bang, through the floor, trap door, because it wasn't leading you towards your destiny. Okay, so every opportunity needs to lead towards my destiny. Are y'all with me today? Every opportunity needs to point me towards my destiny. If it doesn't point me to, towards my destiny, it's not my door. Does that make sense? So every single, uh, you know, you see somebody with a new car. You're like, I need that car. No. 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 You, 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 you don't have you do, the way your credit is set up. It's not the right door for you. And unfortunately, some people will give it to you even though it's not the right door. Are y'all with me today? That's why you got to be very careful about asking God to point you in the right direction because every opportunity is not yours. Does that make sense? So I'm praying about opportunities for you. But as I started praying about opportunities for you, just like the, uh, the, the church is praying for Peter, uh, God... Is fixing something in your cell. Mm, Jesus. We talked about this, right? The Bible says the angel comes into the cell and he shines a light in your cell. You know why you're frustrated right now? Because it's a light shining in your cell. You know why you, it's, it's, see, Peter was sleeping in his jail. Remember we talked about that? He was sleeping in his jail. But some of y'all have fallen asleep in, in a place that's temporary for you. But now God is shining a light and now you're uncomfortable because you know where you should be. Okay, I'm scared of these people over here. I'll talk to y'all. Now God's shining a light. It, it, was, it was some drama about to start over here. You know where you should be. You've looked back over your life. You've taken stock of your life and you've looked back over and you said, no, I should be doing better than this. No, and so what happens is God shines a light in on where you are. He shines a light in, and that, that, that light is frustrating. That light will make you leave some relationships. That light, that light causes many breakups. Hey, hey, man, what, what are we doing? Hey, hey, hey where are we going? That's all she want to know, Pless. She just want to know where y'all going. I ride. Just tell me you got a plan. Are you, are this, 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 what does this look like? Like, I mean, we've been dating, it's cool, but where we going? Yeah. 
I just need some clarity about where we're going. So sometimes you got to go sit down in your boss's office. Y'all ain't ready for this. You got to go sit down in your boss's office and say, hey, what, what are your expectations of me? How do I get from here to here? Because I'm not satisfied. Oh, I'm not satisfied where I am. Don't get it twisted. I'm content. But I'm not satisfied. Oh, man. I'm content, but I'm not satisfied. And some of you, this is how you are. You, this is where you've gotten in your Christian walk. I love when somebody come knock on my door and say, PD, uh, I need to talk to you. What's the matter? Uh, I, what, what's next for me? I'm content. But I'm not satisfied. I'm not hungry, but I could eat. And you got to get to a place in your life where you say, I'm, I'm content, but I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied with, I, with where I am. I'm not satisfied with, our, with this relationship. I'm not satisfied with the type of friends I have. Sometimes I got to get in a new circle. I got to get it. I got to step into a new space. Listen, if you're the smartest person in your circle, you need a new circle. If you're the richest person in your circle, you need a new circle. If you got the, if you got the most degrees in your circle, you need a new circle. You need somebody that challenges you to be better, to have better, to live better, to have more. And there's got to be somebody in your life that's saying, yeah, but... Yeah, but I'm looking for people to challenge me. I'm looking for people to push me. There should be something on the inside of you that pushes something on the inside of me and makes me want to be a better person, makes me want to do better, live better, have more. And, 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 and you get to that point where, oh, no, he just think he better than everybody. Well, I'm not better than y'all. I'm better than this. Does that make sense, Tanisha? I'm not better than y'all. I'm better than this. Okay? So, so we can still be cool. But I need to make my escape to the next level. Somebody say, I'm going to the next level. I'm going to... So, so what God will do is he'll give you revelation. Revelation will push you through an open door. Revelation will push you to a new level. But now you got to get up. Get up what? Yeah, some of y'all Bible scholars in here. Get up quickly. <laughs> Hear me right here because you wasted too much time on this level already. So, 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 some of y'all, you, you know you, you weren't supposed to stay on the level you're on. God was called, you was just passing through. Somehow you got stuck on this level. You got stuck in this relationship. You got stuck on this poverty level. You got stuck at fourteen fifty an hour. You got stuck, and God is saying, "And nothing wrong with fourteen fifty an hour." Remember, I, I, I'm I'm not content. I'm satisfied, but I'm not content. So you got to start figuring out. Okay, but now how do I get to fourteen <laughs> sixty? What do I need to do? And revelation. That's why you need to pray for revelation. Revelation. Listen, hear me right here. Revelation is the light to your next level. Revelation is the light to your next level. That's why you come to church. You come to church so we can fellowship together. And then after we fellowship together and sing together and all that, you should get some sort of revelation. Revelate me, Lord. Re revelation has to do with revealing. Somebody say revealing. Say, just say reveal it to me Lord because there are secrets that are on the next level that if, if, you, if you allow hear me right here if you allow if you open up your heart I will speak something that will unlock your next level not in English in spirit are y'all with me today not in English, in spirit. Sometimes people will come up to me, Pastor Ravon, after church, and they'll be like, remember when you had said this part right here? No. No, I don't remember that at all. No, no, remember you said, no, I didn't say that. Well, I don't even do it anymore. I just say, well, thank you, Jesus. Because what happened is some, the rhema in me spoke to the rhema in you and it unlocked something. And you heard something. I said something about this situation, but it spoke to something way over here that I didn't know nothing about. 
That's what the light will do. Revelation will do. It'll shine a light on, on things that are locked up inside of you. The Bible says that as soon as he, as soon as the light shined in that place, the handcuffs fell off. That's what I want to be able to do for you. That's what a good friend should be able to do for you. One good conversation with a good friend should bring it should break handcuffs off of you. And so what will happen, though, is that the handcuffs will fall off, but you won't get up. And you'll be stuck on this level. I know I'm supposed to be doing better. I know I'm supposed to be living better. I know I'm supposed to have more. I want to get to that next level. How do I get to that next level? Well, you got to get up. You got to get up. Whenever Jesus would do a miracle in the Bible, whenever Jesus would do a miracle in the Bible, uh, he, he would do this strange, weird thing. He would speak to somebody paralyzed. And say, you're healed. Get up. That's so offensive. <laughs> Player, I'm in a wheelchair. <laughs> he says, you're healed. Get up. It was a man with a withered hand. Yeah. On, One of this thing. Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> well, were y'all offended about the Tyrannosaurus Rex? Did that offend you? Oh no, that's discrimination against Tyrannosaurus Rexes. <laughs> Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> the Bible says, Y'all so crazy. The Bible says there's a man with a withered hand, and, and he says, Stretch out your hand. Player, you see me. I'm out here begging. He see a man laying on a mat. Get up, take up your mat. First of all, I can't walk. Second of all, what am I supposed to do with this mat? Jesus will always challenge you to do something. Uh -oh, Y'all missing this. He will always challenge you to do something that is in your ability before you see a miracle. And you want to see a miracle, but you're not willing to do your part to see your miracle. You got to be willing to do your part to see his ability starts where your ability stops. Does that make sense? And then after, after they would stretch out their hand or stand up and he would say, your faith made you whole. See, you got to believe in the, oh, uh, hear me right here. You got to believe enough to get out of your situation. You got to believe enough to get out of your circumstance. You got to believe enough to say, I, I, I'm content, but I'm not satisfied. Or I, I need to go to the next level. I need to see what God has for me. And I believe that he's going to turn my situation around. But then that looks like getting up. Oh, Jesus, that looks like getting up. He said, get up quickly. I love that he, he pops them first. You still mad about the pop pop. God said, get up. You still mad about the affliction. You still mad, but you don't, you don't understand. There is no resurrection without affliction. We talk about the blood. We talk about the blood. We talk about the blood. Blood has to be drawn. There cannot be effectual blood without a breaking of skin. Are y'all with me today? This might be a little deep for y'all. Break out the floaties. This is flap. Okay? This is because, because we talk about the blood in church. The blood of Jesus. The blood changes. The blood fills. The blood does. But, but the blood comes from a breaking. And if there is no breaking, there won't be no blood. What's that mean for me, Pastor Dante? Well, this, it means different things to different people. But everything you've been through, even closed doors, God said he's working it out for your good. You do not understand that even the sad things, even the bad moments, even the bad notes, they're working for your good. It's a light affliction. Remember 1 Corinthians, it's a light affliction working for your good. So God says, now you have the ability you have the ability to get up. That's, what, that's why you got popped in the first place. The Bible says God looks after children and fools. Y'all thought that was just an old saying. That's in Proverbs. God looks after children and fools. You neither one. You, why was y'all offended by that? You're neither one. I hope not. 
You're not a child and you're not a fool. So God has to get your attention. He has to get your attention. And what you thought was hurt or what you thought was pain or what you thought you shouldn't have had to go through, it, it was a light affliction working for your good. That divorce, that breakup, that bad situation, it was a light affliction working for your good. When you got fired that time or laid off that time, it was a light affliction working for your good. I know it's difficult for you. I'm not trying to minimize the difficulty that came along with it. What I'm saying to you is that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord can somebody just give me give me 30 seconds of praise if you know that some bad things worked out for your good girl you was crying you was crying for three days after y'all broke up you look at him now he couldn't get a chance with you now You be wondering, what was I thinking? You cried for three days straight. None of your girlfriends could console you. That wasn't for everybody. That was just for them. I tell, I tell my testimony all the time. I got fired from what I thought the, what was the best job ever. I mean, I thought it was the best job ever. God fire me to elevate me. Sometimes he'll step you back to move you forward. So, 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 so he, he, he gives him a little pop pop. Then he says, get up, gird yourself. What does that mean? It means get ready. You're about to go through something. Now, I need you to understand something. I want you to hear me right here. He didn't do anything for Peter. Not one thing. The angel didn't do one thing for Peter. The angel didn't do one thing for Peter. What he did was show him the way. Sometimes God is not going to do it for you. He's just going to show you the way. Oh, man. Sometimes, it, 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 is there anybody in here just say, show me the way, God. Just show me the way. I can do it myself. I, I, I'm, I got abilities. I can do it myself. If you just point me in the right direction, just show me the way. Are y'all with me today? So he says, just show me the way. And so all of a sudden, the angel says, okay, we're going to go through a door. Somebody say, go through a door. <laughs> so the Bible says that they went through the first door and then the second door and then the third door opened automatically. They went through the first door and then the second door and then the third door opened automatically. This, this, this gives us a, 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 you can get a, a theological understanding from the pericope right here, Kev. Okay. So. Because it said the third door opened automatically, you can assume theologically that the first two did not open automatically. Are y'all with me today? I don't want to lose y'all in this cemetery, I mean seminary class. Are y'all with me today? So we can make an assumption about the first two doors that, that, that they didn't open automatically because the third one did open. Are y'all with me today? Okay, now, so if the first two doors didn't open automatically, how did he get through them? Well, we can, we can, some of y'all are like, what's the answer? You're supposed to tell us. You got the master key. No, I don't. We all got the key. It's right here. Some of us just spend more time digging through it. It's all you. It's, I don't got no more answers than you got. Right here in this thing right here. Okay. So, so how did he get through a door? Well, hello, the, what we have to assume is that the door was closed, but open. Y'all such thinkers, man. Y'all just, I see that little mouse in your head going. The door was closed. But open. See, okay, so some of y'all grew up like around the time when I grew up. Now everybody's got 14 master locks with T codes on their doors and all this stuff, right? So all y'all got this, you know, ring doorbells and all this stuff. But when I grew up, you didn't even lock the door, especially if you was in the house. Sometimes you didn't close the door because it was hot. <laughs> you need to get that airflow going through there, don't you? And tell y'all where I came from. You need the door to be open. Come on, Jesus, open the door. I need some airflow. Ooh, it's too stuffy. Oh, Jesus, too stuffy in my life. I need some open doors in here. 
So, 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 but what would happen is you would close the door, but when somebody would come to the door and knock on the door, you would say, y'all so good. Now, some of y'all, you know, who is it? No. If you're knocking like that, I know who you are. I'm expecting you. <laughs> oh, that'll preach by itself. Look at somebody and say, it's open. It's open. What you would say is that the door is closed, but I need you to bring this to your life right here. Because what some of y'all have thought was a closed door, it wasn't closed. It needs to be manipulated. It's not closed. You're going to have to wretch your, oh, Lord. You're gonna have to wretch your hand out. And turn the knob, you're gonna have to manipulate it because your ability to open that door is intrinsically on the inside. Look at somebody and say it's open. God's saying, I opened the doors already. I already fixed it. I already made a way out of no way. You thought it was locked. It's not locked. It's it's not locked. It's I need you to get this because some of y'all, this is where you are in your life. You've walked up to a door. You've walked up to a space in your life and you say, I can't get through this door. And God's like, it's open. It's open. It's open. But you're going to have to manipulate it. Did somebody just reach your hand out and turn. That's all you have to do. Reach your hand. I want you to remember this motion. This motion. I want you to remember this movement. Because you, you're going to have to, you're going to come up to some things that seem impossible. Oh, hear me right here. Yeah. You're going to come up to some situations that seem impossible, that seem difficult, that seem too hard for you. But you're going to have to reach out your hand and, oh. The problem is, is in church we've been teaching this, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And we think that means wait, like somehow God is in the same element of time that you're in. God's not in time. Z, God stands outside of time. So you, what are you waiting on him to do? God, the Bible says God is the God who was and is and is to come. So that means he's already in the past. He's already in the present. And he's already in the future. What you waiting on? They didn't hear me over there. What you waiting on to start your business, to have your career, to do what you believe God has called you to do? What, what you waiting on to go back to school? What you waiting on? When the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord, it doesn't mean wait like you think, sit in a chair. Wait for the door to open automatically. No, it means this, wait. It means, God, what can I do? How can I serve? Who can I help? My job is to wait upon. They that wait upon. How may I help you, sir? What can I do? Because serving God is serving people. You cannot. Oh, hear me right here. Because I'm going to help somebody right here. You cannot. You cannot be a recluse and serve God. Do you hear me right here? PD, what's a recluse? You, you cannot isolate yourself and serve God. The way you serve God, Jesus said, remember when I was naked and you clothed me? He said, remember that time I was hungry and you fed me? Remember that time I was destitute, I was out, I didn't have a place to live, and, and, and you gave me a place to live? And the disciples said, nope, we don't remember none of that. He said, he said whenever you did it for the least of these, you did it for me. So you can't be a servant of God absent people. I feel like I just helped a whole lot of people. In here. You cannot be a servant of God and, and, and subtract yourself from people. The only way to serve God is to serve people. How can I help you? I'm a servant of God. What can I do? That's why we have servants all over this place. That's why we have them at the door and in the kids ministry everywhere. We put servants at every door because if we're not serving God, then we're just serving ourselves.
So the Bible says that he had to manipulate the door. Somebody say manipulate the door. God's, uh, uh, God's ability starts where your ability stops. You got to get to the place where you can't do no more. And then you stretch out your hand. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And then you stretch out your hand. And then you stretch out your hand. And as soon as you stretch out your hand, then all of a sudden what used to be impossible is now possible. Do y'all hear me right here? What used to be difficult is now possible for you. And I, I know it's hard because it takes faith to stretch out my hand. But if faith... Faith moves the mountain in your life. Now, we thought that means belief moves the mountain. Because you thought, if I just think it hard enough, <laughs> I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. That's belief. Faith is action. I got to do something because of what I believe. Y'all, we would be talking about this at the beginning of the year. Because of what I believe, now I do. Faith is not what you believe. Faith is, faith is the substance of hope. It's not hope. It's the substance of hope. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, it means that if I believe I'm supposed to start a business, I got to start doing some paperwork. I got to start figuring some things out. I got to start moving some people around. I mean... Because it's substance. I got to detach myself from certain people. I, I want to be clear about something. As soon as the light shined in, the, the shackles fell off. I'm praying today that the light shines into your cell and, and, and you get unshackled from some unhealthy people and some unhealthy relationships that's got you locked in on a level that, you, uh, that you're not called to be on. God is calling you to a new level. He's calling you to new places. And you're going to have to get up quickly. And manipulate the door. What's that mean, Pastor Dante? Stretch out your hand. You want to see God do something miraculous in your life? It's going to start with a big faith move from you. Nothing miraculous is just going to happen. You're going to have to make it happen with your stretching of your hand. The Bible says he stretched out his hand and he went through the first door and he stretched out his hand and he manipulated the second door and the third door opened automatically. He stretched out his hand. He manipulated the first door. He stretched out his hand and he manipulated the second door, but the third door opened automatically. He stretched out his hand and he manipulated the first door. I want to remind you today that all you have to do is stretch out your hand. God has purpose. He has a plan for you. But if you're going to get through those first couple of doors, you're going to have to stretch out your hand. God wants to know that you care about it as much as you prayed about it. God wants to know that you care about it as much as you talk to him about it. And that's going to require you to stretch out your hand. But when you get through the first door, and when you go through the second door, the Bible says, that the third door will open automatically. I need to, ooh, I don't know if this is going to work today. I need you to understand something. God is calling you to go to a new door, to have a new opportunity. This is broken. This worked so good this morning. Y'all broke my door. How y'all break my door? The first door you had to manipulate. The second door you had to manipulate. But God said on the third door. Oh, hear me right here. It's going to open automatically. Some of y'all have been worried about your future. God said when you get to the place where it's supposed to open. Oh, I just helped myself. It wasn't supposed to open at first. When you get to the place where it was supposed to open. When you get to the situation where it was supposed to open. Then God said you can just step through the door. You won't have to manipulate. You won't have to do no tricks. You won't have to impress nobody. You can just step through the door. You'll be blessed when you come. Blessed when you go. Blessed, blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. You got to know that the third door is going to open automatically. Some of y'all are right there on the cusp. You're right there on the cusp of seeing God do something great. I'm done. You're right there on the cusp of seeing God do something great. But it's going to take a faith move from you. It's open. 
It's open. You want it to be swung all the way open like this, but some doors are not going to be swung open. Some doors you're going to have to manipulate. But once you, once you, hear me right here, once you open enough doors, I believe that God is going to start automatically opening up situations for you, automatically opening up circumstances, putting you in a place where you, where you can walk through and come out on the other side. Now I want to help you with a couple of quick things. I'm, I'm done. The first thing is these doors are created to only let one person through at a time. some doors in your life you, you're not going to be able to drag everybody through that's gonna, you, you, that's gonna be, you're going to have to get there then when you get there you're going to have to say come on you can do it I did it you can do it come on look I already halfway opened it it's already halfway open for you and I did it you can do it come on through the second thing I want y'all to understand is that uh, I have to sort of tell y'all, I, I was here building this last night with Darius. Man, thank you, Darius. We were here. We were here a long time. Long, long, long time. We was here so long, I had to take a break. I sat down on the couch. I said, I'm going to have to preach something else tomorrow. As we were building it, though, and we got done building it, we got to a place where I felt like it was the, how it was supposed to be. And I was thinking about the sermon and how to sermonize it and how to make it work and everything. And then uh, I, was, I, I started to put it up. We started putting things up. We were cleaning up, Darius, and we were putting away all the tools. And then I reached over to close the door. And it wouldn't close. And I almost broke it. I, I started to hear cracking and... and <laughs> And, and, and God took me to Revelation. Oh, Jesus. The Bible says in Revelation that I'll open up a door that no man can close. I'll open up a door in your life that no man can close. I need you to get this. Because when God opens the door, I said when God opens the door, I said when God opens the door, He said, no, not even you can close it. Wait, wait, wait. I couldn't close my own door. I couldn't close the door. He said, when I open the door, no man can close it. When I open the door, when the door is open, no man can manipulate it. I, wanna hear, I want you to hear me right here. Because, because you need to understand that God is moving you to a new place. I want to help you right here. Stop trying to get everybody's approval for the God thing that God's doing in your life. I say that over here. Stop trying to get everybody to approve the, the God thing that God's doing in your life. You say God's about to do it. Right. God's about to fix it. Right. But there's going to be some people who can't validate what God is doing in your life. There's going to be some people who don't have the strength to get a door open or the strength to close a door. And you're going to have to call on the name of Jesus. Stop reducing God's super to your natural. Y'all hear me right here. Stop trying to validate with natural things what God is doing in a super way in your life. Everybody not going to understand. You're trying to get a quorum agreement on what God is doing in your life. God said, no, no, I opened the door and the door I opened, can no man close it. I want to challenge you today to step through this, this next open door. You got to know when it's leading to your destiny. Either it's leading to your destiny or your demise, right? I want you to understand that. I talked about this last time. There's only two people in your life. There's only two people in your life. There's only two people in your life. You either have an armor bearer or a Paul bearer. Either they're helping you towards your destiny or they're carrying you to your grave. You need to start identifying your armor bearers. They're going to help you get to purpose. It's the last thing. I'm, I'm done. Listen. The Bible says that when he got through the automatic door, 
There was one more door. The door to the church. The Bible says that he went to the church. He went to the place, the, to Mary's house, where they all were meeting and praying. Now, they were praying for Peter to get out of jail. They was praying for Peter to get out of jail. But the door was locked to let him into the church. I can't preach this everywhere. Because we're gonna be the kind of we're not gonna be the kind of church that prays for sinners to come to church and then locks them out when they get there. We're not gonna be the kind of church, hear me right here, that prays for people to come through the door, but then locks them out when they get here. You can't wear this, you can't look like that, you gotta put this on, you gotta fix this, turn this around. The one thing about the prodigal son, I talked to my bishop about this today, one thing about the prodigal son, they put a robe on him when he was stinky underneath. They didn't try to bathe him first, they just told him he was royalty. This is what we gonna do here. We're not gonna pray for Peter to get out of jail and then get mad when he start knocking on the door. We say, Lord Jesus, we want all the rappers to come to church. Then Kanye West make a gospel song and you lock the door. We praying for Peter and he's knocking on the door. We're praying for sinners and they're knocking on the door. But no, first you got to put, put, put on the heaven dress. This is hell. That's heaven, right? You're, you're going to hell here. You're going to heaven here. No, that's man-made. That's man-made. That's man-made. You trying to make them prove something to you, not to God. You're missing it. Peter's knocking on the door. Peter's knocking on the door. A young lady named Rhoda comes to the door. And she, she hears knocking now, 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 now. The church is praying. But nobody hears the knocking. The church is praying. Nobody hears the knocking. What's the revelation that this pastor does? It? Eventually, we're going to have to stop praying and do something. I know you can't clap for it. It feels like, it feels kind of weird. Stop praying. I get, I get it. I get it. It felt weird me saying it, but it's true. We're going to have to mobilize ourselves. We're going to have to do something. We're going to have to, uh, uh, people come to me, Pastor Dante, I can't pay my light bill this month. Okay, let's pray. No, we're going to have to do something. We're not just going to ignore the knocking that's on the door of the church. That's why we need your help. So we can do something other than pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray because that's what we do. But then after that, we're going to do something. The Bible says that Rhoda comes to the door and she hears Peter's knocking. And he must have been shouting. Because the Bible says she recognized his voice. That tripped me out because the Bible said he was knocking on the door, but she recognized his voice. He was knocking on the door, but she recognized his voice. See, uh, the Bible says this about Jesus. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. This is some of y'all, man. God's been knocking at your door, man. God's been knocking at your door. And you got to get to the place where you recognize the voice. You got to get to the place where you recognize the voice. Do you recognize the voice? God's calling you to greater. Some of y'all are pastors, ministers, preachers, evangelists, directors, team leads. You sitting on the sideline and God's going. Can you recognize his voice? Can you hear him calling you to a new place? Some of y'all, this is your first church experience in months. Thank you for being here. Do you recognize the voice? 
I don't care who you are, where you came from. It's open. It's open. Here's the secret about God chasers. It's open. Here's the secret about our church. It's open. Only imperfect people want it. We locking our perfect people around here. Oh, you good? Okay, boo-boo. Talk to you later. That, gotta get that bottom one, man. Top one. Perfect people, no, no need to apply. Application will not be accepted. Imperfect people, it's open. I want to challenge you today. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to challenge you today to come through the door. You said, Pastor Dante, I don't even know. I don't know if God exists. I, I, I don't know if, if God is even real. I was talking to a young man today. Walked right up to me at the other church. He said, I heard your message. It was great. I don't really believe in God, but I thought it was a great message. And I didn't have time to really get into it with him, but I really wanted to say, then you missed the point. Because the point is, behold, I stand at the door and knock. It's open. It's open. This is the place where you can meet God. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to have it all together. Meet God today. It's open. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to know all the scriptures. It's open. You don't have to be, be trained in this. It's open. Christianity is OJT. On the job training. All of us learning as we going. I want to challenge you today. I want to remind you today that it's open. 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 The door of the church is open. The door to God is open. The door to a new life, a new relationship is open. And you just got to manipulate. Oh, hear me right here. All you got to do is take a step of faith. So we're going to say a prayer. We're going to all say it together. But it's just a faith step. We're going to all say it together. It's really simple. But we don't want anybody to feel alone. It goes like this. Repeat after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. Change my heart. Come into my life. Change my life. Father, today I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Today you accepted Jesus Christ into your life. You are now new. All things are made new. The old thing is are passed away. If you said that prayer for the first time or you believed it for the first time, I'm going to ask you to manipulate the handle just one more time. All I want you to do is raise your hand as high as you can raise it. I'm going to count to three and on the count of three if you accepted Jesus on today I want you to raise your hand. One two, three. Raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Come on, it's not too late. If that's you, you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart. You feel like you're making a decision today to live a new life. If that's you today, raise your hand. Come on, it's not too late. It's not too late. If that's you today, if that's you today, raise your hand. And the saints of God are rejoicing all over this place. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Now I want to do one more thing. I, I, I usually do this at the end of service. I usually do this at the end of service, but I feel the Holy Spirit tugging on me.